Welcome back kids. In the last class we have seen, uh, in the last video lecture, we have seen about uh, potential. So what do you mean by potential? Potential is nothing but, I am mentioning here, So, if I am taking an electron here, the amount of energy which is required to move this one to here, it is called as a potential, right? So, this potential, how much energy you do require, it depends upon the charge, right? And at the same time, the amount of charge it is moving, it is also proportional to your current, right? So, V is proportional to Q, which is again proportional to I. So, this simple relation, V is proportional to I. This is also, in other terms, it is given by famous scientist Ohm and it is referred and it is named after him as Ohm's law. Okay, so I can say that two things regarding Ohm's law. You can uh, go through the textbooks. See, let us suppose when I am requiring an energy to move this one from to here to here. So which means that in other terms I can say that this one has gained some potential and this one has, has lost some potential. So there exists a potential difference between these two and this is called as a potential difference. Potential difference between initial position and final position. Okay, so this potential difference is nothing but the amount of energy and this energy is driving your electrons. So in other words it can be stated that at constant temperature, at constant temperature, we will come back to this at constant temperature later in the, this unit itself, but let us hold to this term, at constant temperature the current in the conductor, which means how much amount of charge you are able to move in this conductor is dependent upon the potential drop across its ends, which is in terms again your energy, right? The higher the energy you do have, the more charge you can move. The more charge is nothing but the current, isn't it? That is what is Ohm's law. Very simple. <coughs> I will lie down here. A higher energy, automatically you can move. Right? Higher charge. Large amount of charge you can move, which is nothing but a symbol of current. This is a symbol of V. So, V is proportional to your I. Or in other words, I is proportional to your V. At constant temperature. So, this is what the relation between potential and current is. And the equality constant will come back again in this unit itself. As of now, you should remember this V is proportional to I. Now moving ahead, now let us suppose if I do have two charges right now, I am assuming it again as a point charges, now I will take two charges. There is one positive charge, there is another positive charge here, now what happens? Two charges, two identical charges, two similar charges basically which have the same polarity, which I call it as light charges, they repel each other. They repel each other. Whereas two opposite polarity charges, they will attract each other. Which means there exists a force between these charges. And that force is called as electric force. See, now I am considering only, I am assuming that these charges are static charges. Which means they are not moving anywhere. They are just positioned, just like me. So, I will consider this one as electrostatic force. So, electrostatic force is the force between two static charges. It can be attraction or it can be repulsion also. Okay. And since if you carefully see the force is nothing but a pull basically, E is dependent upon the direction also. So, that's why force is basically a vector and is proportional to the charges. The higher the magnitude of charges, the higher can be the force. So, 
f is proportional to q1 and it is also proportional to q1. At the same time, now let us assume if the charges are very close to each other, automatically what happens? The force can be higher. If the distance is too high, the force can be low, isn't it? So that's why I can say that f is inversely proportional to d. There is one scientist, a famous scientist Coulomb, named after him Coulomb's law, who has determined the expression between the relation between the charges, the distance and the force. And that's why it is called as a Coulomb's law. And he observed that the force is proportional to magnitude of charges and also square of the distance between them. You might have heard about this one. F is proportional to Q1, two are the magnitudes and this is the distance between them. And do remember this is a scalar which is having a direction. See, now you can see these two are positive charges so that's why they are getting repelled against each other so that's why they are moving against whereas these are opposite polarity charges so that's why they are getting closer to each other. So and this is the relation between them. And this is a constant which will come back to this one in, in the later part of this unit. Okay. I hope that you have understood this Coulomb's law. Right. And this is the relation between them. Now, I will get back to this Coulomb's law. I will uh, see. Now, we will have a quick discussion on this Coulomb's law. Okay. Now, let us suppose. Uh, now, let us suppose. Coulomb's law is there. Coulomb's law states that F is proportional to Q1, Q2 by R square, right? Which means that there is a charge, positive charge, and uh, let us suppose there is another charge. So, automatically what happens? They get repelled against each other. Now, let us take this in other words. Now, let us suppose there is a charge, it is having an impact again, it is having an area which we call as R in our movies, right? So, let us suppose it is having its own impact. So, if I bring any other positive charge in this field, in this area, let us suppose if I bring any other charge, automatically what if I bring like this, automatically what happens? It gets repelled, which means that this is the impact, this is the area where the impact, see this is the area where the impact of this charge is being felt. So, if I bring anything into its vicinity, now it is being impacted. See, that's why this electric force now, which is existing between two charges, now I have downsized into these two steps. One is there is an electric charge and it is having a vicinity around it and any other charge which is brought into the vicinity of this one, it experiences a force. So, that is why. Thinking of one charge as producing an electric force. See, this impact which it is creating is called as electric field. Which means that even though this charge is not present here, so don't be in assumption that whenever there are two charges only there exists electric force. Now I am removing this one now. Which means that there is a single charge and now we can come to a conclusion that there is an area around which the impact of this charge is felt. And this area where the impact of this charge is felt, it is called as an electric field. This is called as an electric field. So, this is what which has been mentioned here. You think of one charge as producing an electric field everywhere in space. This is producing electric field. And the force on other charge introduced into this electric field is caused by this electric field. Because of this electric field only, it is experiencing a charge. Okay. Now, this electric field, let us suppose there is a charge here. The electric field which is created by this one. If I choose a point here, then automatically the impact of this electric field may be higher. And if I choose here, the impact may be lower. Which means that the electric field, which is often referred as E, is proportional, inversely proportional to D. We will come back to the original expression later. So, E, E is inversely proportional to D. In the same time, if the magnitude is higher, then the electric field may be higher. So, E can be proportional to Q also. So, 
is proportional to q and is inversely proportional to b and later it was actually determined as e is proportional to q by d square that we will see in the later part of this video, okay and as already said electric field is also a vector quantity which exists at every point in space and if you carefully see electric field is a vector quantity and it exists at every location and it is just nothing but very similar to the force force is normally considered between two points so far but electric field is a force which is being acted on a positive test charge so let us suppose there is a positive charge here and it is a vicinity of this one where you can experience electric fields okay now let us suppose if i bring a positive charge unit positive charge so whatever the force which is experienced by this positive unit charge it is considered as electric field so in the force equation which is equal to q1 q2 by d square f is proportional to q if i make this one one plus one so this is called as electric field intensity of this particular charge okay it is often referred to as electric field uh, strength also sometimes and electric field intensity also okay now uh, so what we have discussed in the last class we have discussed we have seen that electric charges can be of different configurations and electric fields exist due to the electric charges so uh, i hope now you can easily explain the coulomb's law and the concept of electrostatic force and electrostatic field but in the next class you will see why do we require different types of uh, coordinate systems okay thank you